What's happening? It's at Ball's day. Happy sixth birthday. Inexplicably tenacious tweet. It's also, for this year at least, UKIP day, in which the party leader ceremonially emerges from behind his self-imposed barricade to launch their election campaign. Consider the other day's integration agenda a mere unappetizer. Paul Nuttall might even reveal where he's going to stand for election. Now he has finally decided to give it a whirl. Haywood and Middleton. Hartlepool or Bootle are possibilities. Although the Telegraph reports it will be Boston and Skegness. Nuttall. Map for Northwest England. Has so far had five unsuccessful shots at a Westminster seat. Closing in tantalizingly on party grandee Nigel Farg's seven. It's been a wobbly start for UKIP. With Theresa May occupying the Brexit means Brexit space. Douglas Carswell. It's once sole MP. Tearing away. And backlash yesterday to the selection of Anne-Marie Waters. A fan of Marine Le Pen who has described Islam as evil. In Lewisham East. UKIP's North East Regional Chairman, Steve Turner, has defected to the Conservatives, calling his old party unprofessional. UKIP is no longer the better option for people who feel they can't support Labour. The better option, says the not entirely unbiased Prime Minister, is the Tories. May pitched up last night in Hare Hills in Labour's heartlands, to try to turn those hearts blue, with glowering warnings. While it may say Labour on the ballot it's Jeremy Corbyn, gets the vote. Whether any Leeds waverers were on the guest list to be converted is somewhat doubtful. Things aren't all going May's way, mind, with a rebuke from the, the High Court yesterday, which ruled. The government cannot delay its air pollution plan until a conveniently quiet moment after the election. Ed Davey, the Lib Dem former climate secretary, told BBC 2S Newsnight, Conservative ministers should be hanging their heads in shame fear trying to hide this from the electorate, when this is a public health scandal. There's pressure, too for the PM to step away from her promise not to raise taxes. Oh, and there's Boris Johnson. After glumphing back into the fray yesterday, the Foreign Secretary, the Telegraph teases today, could be reshuffled out if May gets her landslide. And will she? Tony Blair seems to think so. At a glance. Tories call on wealthy donors to stump up 19M4 election fund. Some Labour MPs are distancing themselves from Corbyn in their local campaigns. Scottish party leaders will take part in a TV debate on 24 May, but the Greens aren't invited. Rachel Johnson, sister of Tory ministers Boris and Joe joins the Lib Dems in Brexit protest. John Cray's sketch, Love in for last MPS standing as Commons closes its doors. Latest here after police thwart suspected terror attack in Westminster. Poll position. A fresh Yaugav poll. The Times on Scottish voting intentions is cheering morning news. Conservatives who still trust polls. It has the SNP on 41%, down 9 on the 2015 result, with the Tories up to 28%, plus 13, and Labour slipping yet further from what was already a historic low, to 18%, minus 6. That would leave the SNP with 47 seats in Westminster, losing 9. And the Tories with eight, gaining seven. Labour would keep its sole place, while the Lib Dems would skip from one to three MPS. Diary.
At 1 1 m, UKIP launches its election campaign with leader Paul Nuttall in Westminster. Nicola Sturgeon campaigns in East Renfrewshire, where the SNP ousted Jim Murphy in 2015. Former Better Together campaign director Blair McDougall is Scottish Labour's candidate this time. At 3 p.m., Vince Cable speaks on Brexit at a Lib Dem rally in Twickenham. At 6 p.m., John McDonnell and Labour Liverpool City mayoral candidate Steve Rutherham attend a campaign rally in the city. Away from the campaign trail, Boris Johnson attends a Security Council meeting on North Korea. Talking Point With talks on reviving the power-sharing government at Stormont, already a number of chances passed their one last chance, shelved until after the Westminster election, and plans for cross-party pro-minus and anti-Brexit candidates faltering. In hops the U with a hint that it could recognize a future United Ireland. U leaders meeting on Saturday for the first of many. Many Brexit summits will discuss a text, urged by the Irish government, affirming that, if Ireland were to unify, the North would automatically rejoin the U. There's no border poll in the offing, and a BBC survey after the Brexit vote in which Northern Ireland voted 56 to 44 to remain, found percent would opt to stay in the UK. The used toe dipping on the Gibraltar issue led to thunderings about war. Northern Ireland could probably do without that kind of reaction. Read these. Sophie Walker, leader of the Women's Equality Party, sets out her stall in the Times. There is a whole lot of soul-searching, particularly for the left, which thinks it has a monopoly on women's equality, so they politely tell us to go and make that point somewhere else. But we're not making a point, we're making a change, and we're doing it by being a political party for people who want a different kind of opposition. I've been accused this week of being a vote-splitting outsider in Shipley where I'm standing against the sexist in chief Philip Davies. Outsider, you bet. Women always are in politics, splitting the vote, as if. When the conservatives are heading for a landslide on the scale of Labour's in 1997, when Labour is briefing internally, sitting MPs with majorities of 10,000 are on watch to lose their jobs. And when Labour categorically rules out allegiances again and again, well, it's not the presence of WEP that is heralding a conservative tsunami. Charlie Cooper and Tom McTague examine the Corbyn campaign machine for Politico. Corbyn has been in a state of almost perpetual campaigning, twice for the leadership and in the U referendum minus since the 2015 election, and is happiest on the stump. The official said, his team hopes that the same grassroots enthusiasm, demonstrated in barnstormer rallies reminiscent of Bernie Sanders in two successful leadership campaigns, will catch on nationwide, asked whether the strategy amounted to damage limitation, given the state of the polls. The official pointed to locations Corbyn has visited during the campaign so far, such as Crewe, Cardiff, Swindon and Bristol, where there are Tory seats the party thinks they can win, and Scotland, where the SNP dominates. They believe they can deliver an upset. The Foreign Secretary's return to the fray was an exercise in controlled chaos. Writes Isobel Thompson in Vanity Fair. Johnson's vivid, theatrical entrance onto the general election stage might seem strangely off-kilter with Theresa May's tactics thus far, refusing to engage in dramatics. Her method has been one of blunt attrition, a one-size-fits-all approach, 
promising, simply, strong and steady leadership in the face of a coalition of chaos. The conservative campaign is acutely managed by Sir Linton Crosby, who oversaw David Cameron's 2015 victory, and is notoriously controlled in his strategy. Freeing Boris Johnson might give the illusion of color but, really, he spoke in shades of May, sounding remarkably like a tactically timed injection of controlled chaos to an overly dull election campaign. Crushing Revelation of the Day Disappointingly for those who feel the campaign is lacking that essential dash of Alan Partridge, Tim Ferron was not encouraging a voter in Cambridge yesterday to smell my spaniel. Party spoil sports reveal. While the Lib Dem leader does indeed have a spaniel, black and white Springer, goes by Jasper. He was merely joshing that the supporter's dog, Sandy Terrier, name unknown, could sniff it on his clothes. The day in a tweet. With the 2015-17 Parliament prorogued, though not dissolved till next Wednesday, it was goodbye to some of the MPS who won't, by their own choice, be back when the Commons meets again on June. In some workplaces you are sent on your way with an indecipherably scrawled card. And ah uh, sorry you are leaving. In Westminster, the 2017 leavers, not to be confused with 2016's leavers, including retiring Eric Pickles, got a hug from Speaker John Burko. And another thing. Would you like to wake up to this briefing in your inbox every weekday? Sign up here.